Arcadia paid me $150,000 to fix their engineering workflows. Let me show you exactly what I built for them. So I'm gonna be using two projects as an example. I'm gonna be using Mobile Kanban and Mobile Dev to show you what the problems were and exactly how to fix them. So if I open up both of the workflows from those projects and go between them, you'll notice that they're completely different. One of them is has a whole bunch of statuses, one of them has only a few, but really the biggest problem here is that the workflow scheme is not shared and the workflow statuses are different. And this causes three really major problems. The first one is when we're actually adding or changing the workflow. If we have, like in Arcadia's environment, 47 different development teams, if I want to add a status to either of these, let's say I'm adding UAT to both of these workflows, it's gonna take me 47 times longer to actually do this for each project. Versus if these are all unified, it takes one change and takes 47 times less. So that's big problem number one. Big problem number two is related to project creation. And I'll go over the full project creation process in terms of how to actually use shared schemes. But the big problem here is that when we create a new project and we wanted to share the same statuses, validator screens, and everything else, it could easily take six to 10 hours to set up manually. Versus if we have a shared workflow scheme that we're just immediately applying it to, that takes it down to maybe 10 to 20 minutes of setup time. So you're saving a ton of time on new projects being created. And last but not least, the third biggest thing that is absolutely the, the major problem here is gonna be reporting. So obviously between these, we're missing a lot of statuses. And if I want to find out how many particular tasks are in testing and in accepted, I'm not gonna be able to do so because this workflow doesn't have those statuses. And as a stakeholder, as an IT director, as an engineering director, a CEO, or anyone else, a CTO, I'm not gonna have any insight and it's gonna be very, very difficult for me to get any relevant reporting from my JIRA environment until this is fixed. So let me go over exactly how I fix this. The setup for this is fairly simple. It does take a while to actually roll out and implement uh, for a few different reasons, but especially if you have a lot of projects. And quick side note, the less projects you have, the easier this is to do. So if you start earlier, it is gonna be easier. If you have 47 projects, do it immediately. Having 10 versus 47 is gonna be easier. Having three versus 10 is gonna be even easier. So the less projects you have, the better it is to standardize early. That way you don't actually have to go through and do this later and allocate a enormous amount of time doing it later and running migrations, planning them out, mapping your statuses, and I'll walk you through all that in a second. But the earlier you do this, the better. It's gonna save you a lot of time and headache later. So the way we actually fix this is by going to our settings on the top right, going to work items, and then we're gonna to go to our workflow schemes. Not our workflows, but workflow schemes. And you'll notice that on the left side, there's actually other things like work type screens, field configuration screens, and a whole bunch more. These are actually pretty relevant to consolidate for projects. And what we did for Arcadia was screens, fields, workflows, and priorities. Those are probably the four very most common and basic things that you want to start standardizing as soon as you can. Workflows being the highest priority by far. So inside of our workflow schemes, I'm gonna add a new workflow scheme. I'll give this a simple name like software development. I'll just name it software dev to keep things simple. And now we've created our workflow scheme and it's gonna be all the way, or there it is, it actually pops up right after we create it. Uh, and the next step here is to actually add a workflow. The quickest thing to do here is actually to add an existing workflow that is either 100% of what you want for all of your projects or maybe most of the way there, that, you, that way you can make a few final tweaks. And then based off of that, you can have your finalized workflow rather than building from scratch. So I'm gonna use this one as an example because let's say it's very close to or exactly what I want. Again, I can't tweak this either before or after. I'm just starting with this because it's gonna be easier to implement a workflow that's mostly built out. So software simplified workflow for uh, project mobile. I'll copy over the name and then I'll add a workflow here. I'll add an existing one and I'll just do a command F, command V, find that workflow and apply it to all unassigned issue types or just all issue types in general. And there we go. Now we have ourselves a workflow scheme with an applied workflow. Um, I'm actually going to add another workflow. I'm gonna apply all of them instead. It's gonna help override all of the other issue types or work items that we actually have in our project. So I'm actually gonna apply this to all of them. And if you wanna split these up, maybe by epic, story, task, you can do that. I'm gonna keep things simple in this demo just to show you what it would look like if you apply it to all of these issue types. I'll hit finish. Now we have these work types assigned to everything and we have a brand new workflow scheme for software development that is built and ready for us to use. 
So everything's good to go. I'll copy over the name. And if I go back to workflow schemes, the homepage, you'll see that uh, if I actually search for it or try to find it, it's gonna be under the inactive panel. And I should see it in my list. There we go, software development. I have the workflow applied to each of the issue types. And as of right now, I actually have no projects assigned to it. So let's go ahead and start fixing that. I'll go through my list of projects and find exactly which projects I want to associate with this workflow. So I'll close out my old one and I'll open up mobile dev, mobile Kanban, and mobile program because maybe those are essentially developing towards the same uh, product or have like a very similar team for all of them. So I'll open up those three. Inside of each of those, I'll go to project settings. I'll go to the workflows tab. And in here, all we have to do is switch the scheme. And it is simple enough. That being said, when we actually run this change, I'll show you what it looks like when we start to go through. We have to add in a mapping, a status mapping. So if you're adding or removing statuses, you're gonna have to map over the old statuses to the new ones. And if there is some overlap, like if you have in progress in both, those are automatically mapped and don't actually show up here. Um, so I'm gonna go through and just really quickly do the mapping. And you can keep an eye on this little ticker on the left side, uh, which just means that if there's uh, a number in here above one, there, there, that means there's at least one issue type of that type that is currently active and we need to map that. So because there's zero here for task and campaign, I'm gonna skip them because it doesn't really matter. Whereas for subtask, I'm gonna make sure to map those. So backlog might go to to do, selected for development might go to, let's just say in progress. Story, I'll do the same thing, to do, in progress, and I'll go through the rest of these and make sure that they're actually mapped correctly. Same thing with bug, to do, in progress, epic, to do, in progress, and I believe that should be it for my mapping. Um, this could get a little bit more complex, especially if you're migrating a lot of statuses into like a smaller workflow, or you're making a lot of changes during this kind of a migration. So make sure your mapping is correct. Make sure your engineering teams know that when this change is gonna happen, that way they could prepare and help potentially actually put this mapping together. You don't wanna make this mapping change and then not let them know because they might be very confused as to what the new statuses are and where they came from. So we have everything mapped. All we do is click associate and then our actual mapping happens. Our association of this new workflow scheme is gonna happen. If I refresh a couple times, it should be really quick. And now our brand new workflow scheme for software development is applied to this project. Now I have to go through and do that for the rest of these projects. So I'll go to this project settings of my next project, go through workflows and apply the same exact thing once again. So I'll switch the scheme and I'll go through, find my new one, software dev, click associate. And in this case, we actually have nothing to migrate because they're identical, which you may come across in some scenarios and we're good to go. And now if you look at the top, we see that software dev is now shared by two separate projects. And if I click on that, we see mobile dev and mobile Kanban right at the very top. If I also go back to my schemes and I refresh this, I should see software development at the top under active. And we should also see, there we go, both of these projects listed under software development. So rather than each of these like we had before, having their own workflow scheme, their own workflows, they are now unified and using the same workflow. And if I go in and make any changes, let me pull up mobile dev and mobile Kanban. And between these, I will make sure to make a change on one and we'll take a quick look at the other one to see if that change propagated. Really the whole point and whole idea here is that we're unifying these and any future changes, any future reporting that we're doing is actually gonna be accurate. And believe it or not, this is one of the most common mistakes I see engineering teams make. They all have their own workflows, even if their sprint cadence and their reporting and their product is the same, they don't standardize their work. And this is what Jira was built to do. This is what Jira was built to solve with the workflow schemes and the way it's configured. Um, so hopefully this tutorial actually kind of makes sense for you. Um, the actual statuses of the work items themselves are less important than the standardization. Probably make a video in the future in terms of like maybe a perfect engineering workflow, in my opinion, but that's obviously subjective, not objective. So I'm not covering the exact statuses, I am covering the concept behind how we actually implement this in Jira. So hopefully it provides some value. If it does, hit thumbs up, that way more people can see it. Uh, but let's jump in and take a quick peek at these changes. So I'll open up one of these and look at the diagram view. And in the other one, I'll just go through and edit the workflow really quick. So I'll just add a quick status. Maybe we're gonna add something like approval, maybe an approved status. Let's go ahead and add that one in. We'll click add, drag this to the bottom. And if I look at the old one, the approved status is not here, non-existent. We'll go through publish the draft. We won't save a backup. 
you should definitely save a backup though. Uh, once that's done, it'll say the draft workload is now active. I'll go back here, refresh the page, and we'll take a quick look to see if that change is applied. Back in the diagram, we now have a proof showing up in this workflow. So you can immediately see that if you have a ton of projects in Jira and you're going through making these changes manually for each project, it will take you so much longer to do that for each individual workflow versus having one standardized workflow, you make the change once and you're done. And obviously the, re the reporting impact is, is pretty major because between the two of these, we now have unified statuses. We can see when things are in testing, when things are uh, accepted or canceled. We have actually accurate reporting on this data when we pull these statuses out in the future. So that's what I wanted to show really quick with the actual status, merging these into like a shared workflow scheme. Let's go over the project creation process. So I know a lot of teams kind of get this part wrong, so I wanted to cover it specifically to show you how I do this and my kind of recommended best practices when I actually run through the process. So I'll pull up and just go to create a new project by clicking the little plus icon next to the project screen. And I like to scroll down, go all the way to Jira. It's a lot easier for me to see by product than by the actual templates. I don't particularly like using the templates very much, especially if we're already sharing information that we've created previously. And in here, you choose either Kanban or Scrum. If you are an engineering team, I'll choose Kanban and keep things simple. I will use this template and then I will scroll down and make sure I select company managed. Do not select team managed. If you already have team managed projects, the big pitfall with these and the reason I almost never recommend them is because there's zero standardization options with them and we cannot share workflows with team managed projects. So make sure you're selecting company managed here. We'll give this a quick name. Let's see, let's call it mobile version two, something unique, something uh, different. Uh, and then a key, you could either have this automatic or tweak it. And then we need to check this box, which is share settings with an existing project. Check that box. And then what you do is find the project that you know already has the configurations and implementations that you want. So I'm gonna pull in and say mobile dev is the project I want to copy over uh, or essentially pull the, the same workflows and schemes from. So I wanna make sure that we get the software dev workflow with this particular workflow uh, apply to these issue types. So I will find mobile dev in my list. I could click the drop down and type in mobile and then I'll find mobile dev. And now it's gonna be pulling and sharing settings with that project. We'll click on next and this should create the project, should take a couple seconds. Once that's created, I'm gonna jump in and actually take a look at the project settings to make sure our same configurations exist here. So we'll jump into project settings and workflows and I'll go through the diagram view again and once again, we get the same exact workflow rather than an out of box basic standard workflow. We could see that if we hover over, you know, where this is shared, who, what projects this is shared by. If we click on the three projects up here, we now see mobile two and the rest of the projects in our Jira environment. So hopefully this, this makes sense in terms of why it's actually beneficial and recommended to standardize all of your projects in Jira and how I would go about actually implementing this. Some of kind of my thought process when doing so. This is exactly what we did for Arcadia. I used the same process to implement and migrate, consolidate all of their workflows, as well as their priorities, screens, uh, and their fields. So I know a lot of this can get a little bit complicated. And again, the earlier you start, the better. And if you are looking to partner with someone to actually help you with this part of consolidation or just general uh, Atlassian Jira best practices, helping you standardize or implement the best possible version of your process in Jira, feel free to reach out to myself. There is a link in the description to book a strategy session and I will see you there.